wolf is back. Ate a raccoon and left the paw. This isn't a normal wolf. It's just a hungry wolf looking for an easy meal. I will catch it. I was watching, uh, I was watching the film Hunter Hunter, which I thought was fantastic, by the way. Um, oh. I had to uh, sit down when I had to lie down for a few minutes after the, uh, the ending. I did, not say, I did not expect that. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I did not expect that at all. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> a lot of the aspects of the film reminded me a little bit. They mirrored lockdown in a way. When, 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 when we ended up in lockdown, did, did you find yourself recalling a lot of things that you, you shot in the film? I did kind of, because so, some of the themes that we're working with, like, uh, the individual as opposed to the tribe, you know what I mean? Can you be safe on your own? Can you survive on your own? Or do we depend on each other for safety and for survival? And I think times being what they are shows we do need each other. We do depend on each other. So I think that that theme is, is really strong right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you say that, it, it says that we need to depend on each other. But I also felt that there was an underlying theme in the film that it was exactly the opposite, that we really, we can't, we can't trust strangers and, and then the, at the end of the day we've got to stand up for ourselves i i think that uh, i think i think we're both right i mean yes you can't trust strangers but at the same time you can't isolate yourself from strangers either because you can't escape danger danger will find you mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah so obviously with you saying that i can i, I can i sense that you you prefer to be with people no than, than without so um, was it, no, was it I, sorry no oh good. no all right, now, my, my next question was going to be if it was difficult for you to adapt to the, to the climate of being, of being a country bumpkin to, 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 to play um, this role. Yeah, that was tough because I am from the city and I grew up in the city and I've never camped or like closest I came to camping was going to a, a punk rock overnight thing that ended in <laughs> like five people getting punched out. So it wasn't like, <laughs> but anyway, that's a different story. But I've never been camping. So that was weird. Like, you know, uh, you know, there, how do I do this? How do I, you know, cut a beaver? Just stuff that <laughs> they were nice enough to show me, but I had zero clue about whatsoever. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so aside from becoming a country bumpkin, I, what I really enjoyed about the film was the fact that it, it's in a sense, I mean, I think you're about the same age as me. You're a, you're a mother, I'm a father. And despite this fact, it's a coming of age story. Did you not feel the same way? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did in a way. I think, um, uh, at least for me, I, I go through such a such a big journey from um, being protected in a sense by someone else, also being self-reliant, but being protected and being insulated and um, wanting to bust out of that, but then finding that when I do, obviously it's um, not what I imagine. Uh -huh. And the, the film, because of the circumstances, obviously it triggers these these dormant instincts that you've been trying to I don't know if you've been trying not, not to, to accept them or, or trying just to delay them, but because of the circumstances, these, these dormant instincts that you tried to reject because you chose to live with your husband, but you didn't want to do the same things that he did. Um, so that, and that in a way is, is the coming of age that I'm talking about. So how did you approach um, this switch from the mother to the mother and father figure, and at the same time, accepting that your daughter and, and, and your husband in the film were maybe more correct in a way that where they were, they had more education than the education that you were hoping for your daughter, for example. Right. Um, well, one of the ways is we approached it, uh, Sean, was, the director, was super helpful um, in taking me on the journey to making sure that I start out, um, I'm a fairly confident speaker and, and I'm pretty confident in my, the way I present myself. So this take to a place of less confidence and being fearful of people almost like a like a like an animal you know that doesn't know strangers and then to as we as I took on more of the father role to shake off some of that to step more into the father role to become more rugged to to take even literally I took his seat at the dinner table in one of the scenes and then that's when this transformation right. is really yeah. starting to happen um, and then the other thing the theme I was working with is sort of the idea that um, uh, if you look too long into the abyss, the abyss looks back at you. So, you know, especially with regard to the ending, I was thinking that, you know, there's a certain point where everyone breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell me about uh, with your role with, with the daughter in the film? Because, like I said, she, she gives you an education in life in the end. Now, could you just a, get briefly explain how you, how you approach that? There's a couple of specific scenes in there. Can you explain how you approach that with, with her as well? 
Um, yeah, well, first of all, we're so lucky because Summer Howells, she's such a wonderful actress. She's fantastic she's so, in so the film, yeah. Fantastic. And she was so easy to work with and we got along like gangbusters. So, and there are a few scenes that didn't end up making the movie where we had a couple sweet uh, mother-daughter moments that I think helped to build up a rapport between us. And um, also the way our relationship changed, I think we just sort of investigated the push and pull between how she felt about me taking on different, me taking on more of a father role, me taking on more of a dominant position and how that affected our relationship. And um, uh, I don't know, it was a complicated one, I guess. This is a hard life. You chose it and it suits you. I chose it when I chose you. Renee never had a choice. In, in terms of education, again, I mean, maybe I was reading between the lines too much or maybe not, I don't know. But uh, especially at the beginning, your character is very adamant to give your daughter the education that you think that she deserves. But at the same time, I couldn't, yeah. help, I couldn't help thinking that maybe really it's you are wanting the education for her to, re to redeem some of your own regrets from, from the choices that you've made in your life. I mean, the isolation that takes part because we live in the remote wilderness is made worse by the fact that um, I, I think my character desperately wants connection to other people. And, and can't find it and can't have it. And because I've rejected society, society's also rejected me. And so, yeah, I do want for her these things that I imagine, I think, I imagine I missed out on. You know, I imagine I missed out on this more normal life and things she could be doing and things I could be doing in the house we could live in and we could be with people and we could be part of society. Um, and I could have more supports than just him and just her. There's a killer out there. My advice is to move your family out of the woods. Get behind me! What if we can't make it out before the freaks? We don't run from our troubles. The film definitely um, highlights the ineptitudes of uh, the local, he goes on the yuppies, they call them yuppies in the film, not the, yeah. local, the local educated people, if you will, but also the ineptitudes yeah. of, the, of the police. Um, was that something that um, Sean really picked up on and wanted to make some kind of statement about, do you think? Um, yeah, I'm sure he did. I mean, I haven't spoken too much about him, so I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm right. sure he did. I'm, uh, we can certainly see that the, the, for me, yes, you, I, I, I want to be part of society and I think we depend on each other at the same time. Not everybody in society is a good actor. Not everybody is working on our behalf. Not everybody will, you know, take the steps necessary to deal with the situation we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's for me is kind of the push pull of like, here are people who should be on the same side as me, uh, especially in terms of the police, and who are not helping me, and who are in fact more of a threat to me because I, I won't live their way. Mm -hmm. And also, it, uh, I, th I felt that it also highlighted the ineptitudes of, of us, of, of males, of men. Was that something that was very, very much in everybody's minds while, while you were shooting the film? Yeah, I think it was. I mean, it was, yeah, I think it was definitely on everybody's minds. I mean, it was on, it was on mine for sure. It was such a wonderful part for me in that way that I really got to, to um, step out of the traditional roles that women uh, play mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, you know, really explore uh, the, the animalistic side of myself, which is so rare. I mean, never, nobody wants to see women making the ugly fakes but I want so badly to make the ugly face. <laughs> Stay in this room until I come get you. Say you understand. I understand. Can you tell me a little bit about how you approached all of this skinning animals and, and all of these kinds of things and, and all the other things that we see in the film that I don't want to give away, but can you explain how you approach that and how Sean directed because he's, and he's done pretty in his previous films there's some pretty gruesome effects as well, but this, really does get gruesome. Yeah, it gets pretty gruesome. I had help in terms of skinning the animals and stuff. Um, our props master was wonderful and he showed me how to do things and we had, um, and Sean knew, so everybody took really guided me through it. And getting over, at first it was very um, disgusting and sad, but then it's amazing how quickly you get over that. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, whatever, you know, they were just like joking around. You know, we weren't actually, we hurting any animals. Obviously. So you'll be sure you'll be doing that for Christmas dinner this year then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'm proud. 
That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Camille. I wish you the best of luck with the film. I'm sure it's going to go down really well, especially that ending. And I hope <laughs> to speak to you again sometime soon. Yes, thanks so much. All right. Take care then. All the best. Snag a wolf. You gotta outwolf him.